Hello and welcome to another Comics Burst from the Full Force podcast, sponsored by Distant Planet Comics and Collectibles, where we take an in-depth look at the newest G.I. Joe comics and related titles of the week. With me as your host, Chris, Artificial Unintelligence McLeod, aka Diagnostic Katie. Joining me on this episode is Brian Alpha 000 Hickey. On this instalment of your absolutely favourite kind of burst, we look at issue 264 of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this comics burst. G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 264, Artificial Intelligence, part 3. G.I. Joe battles for justice, liberty and freedom around the globe, and with the evil terrorist organisation known as Cobra slithering around every corner, the stakes have never been higher. Okay, well before we get into this issue, Brian, thanks for jumping on. It's been a long time, buddy. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great. Absolutely um, delighted to be back on another uh, <laughs> comics burst, taking a look at one of my favourite comics, A Real American Hero, G.I. Joe, and what an, what an issue. What an issue. What an what issue. An, it's a banger, isn't it? Okay, so let's, let's start with the cover, because we, ne- we never really do this, and, and since, since I've been doing Talking Joe episodes with Chief... I, I realise that structure is key. So let's start with the cover. What do you think of the uh, the standard? I mean, what, which cover did you end up getting, by the way, I should ask? I kind of get random covers from my um, comic book provider. Brilliant. So so I never know what I'm going to get, but I got the, the, the B variant. Oh, nice. So, nice. So we, this is by Dan Frago and Adelso Corona. Yeah, and Matt Yaki on colours, right? Matt Yaki on colours, and I mean, it's it's you've got the white background. I really like it. I'm liking that. It's just it's like a battle charge, you know. You've got Stalker, Scarlet, Snake Eyes, Roadblock charging in, you know, backed up by some kind of heavy air support. Yeah, you have got the Skyhawk, the X thirty, and you got the Dragonfly, haven't you? It's, yeah, pretty, the Dragonfly, yes, pretty sweet. Well, what I tell you, what that remind that that actual cover does look. It looks like something you'd see on a product catalog, like you know, or like a leaflet that you get with the toys, you know, like that. that if that was the wave of figures and and vehicles that were out that year, kind of thing. That's that's what it kind of that's yes. what it kind of uh, invokes in me when I look at it. And I love that stark white contrast in the background as well. It's it's a superb superb cover, but it doesn't necessarily connect in with the with the story per se. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, you've got the um, the A variant by Nito Diaz, which is I mean the A variant is actually far more what you're getting in the comic with Destro yes. Baroness. You've got I think they're they're chess pieces, aren't they? And Alpha what zero zero one is moving Destro on the chessboard, which is quite interesting. I didn't I didn't actually notice that initially when I first saw it, but then having a closer look at it, you can see Destro's on like a stand and the chessboard is underneath them. But yeah, it's um it's cute because obviously it's saying that now Alpha Zero Zero One of the Revanche of of Revanche is, you know, in control of Destro, Baroness, his Iron Grenadiers and, and Mars now, which is quite terrifying they're just pawns in a in a bigger nice, game which nice. which we're waiting for for larry to to tell us more about this the the, the cover ri variant by uh tim latty oh that's a beauty isn't it as well that's uh, i mean that's got a, like a cartoon kind of feel to it that looks big wow. animated vibes yeah you got kill hall shipwreck and then from what i can gather you've got sky sharks in the background a Skyhawks in the foreground, Ace and the Sky Striker behind Keel Hall, and then the the flag that they're on. The flag. That's I mean, beautiful. again, nothing, nothing even remotely resembles that in the issue, which is hilarious. <laughs> Something I do want to mention, though, is that all of the variant, the toy packaging art variant covers, the Snake Eyes ones, they were going to be released at SDCC as a big special thing with with I think a few mystery pieces of art as well. But that got canned, so I'm guessing these are coming out, but in a different way. So they're coming out as re- as as variants. I just don't know how they're coming out as variants. Yeah, of course, I haven't seen any of these. I'm just looking at the inside front cover here, but they look pretty amazing. Well, so, it's and basically, there's no, no it's all, branding on them. No, it's all the 25th. It's all the 25th art. So this was going to be the SDCC kind of exclusive thing, but it, it eventually the, they basically got cancelled because of a production issue. So um, yeah, you've basically got the 25th anniversary Snake Eyes art, and you, and they we say 25th anniversary because it, it's slightly different different from the original painted versions that these had in their original vintage versions. So the 25th anniversary kind of got slight rejigs where I suppose certain parts were covered, 
by the bubble or were off off the card or you know they couldn't get the original artwork so they had to redo it and try and keep as close to the original as possible so there's a few different kind of diff- and also the other the other aspect with that is that there are some differences on the action figure so they had to make that you know in kind of like a gi joe collector's club style they had to make the artwork match the figure a little bit so where they've done re rejigs of uh, vintage art in the in the past that's what's happened here but yeah quite upset they they didn't do it for the sdcc exclusive thing but uh, and again i don't know how it's coming out um but apparently we will be getting these as variant covers anyway somewhere <laughs> god knows where or how maybe they've already been out Maybe they've been put out with these cover A, B and the retailer incentive. I don't know. Well, you know, if any of the listeners have seen these uh, variant covers in the wild, let us know. Yes. Tell us about it. Or tell us why they haven't seen them in the wild because they're not out yet. <laughs> and when <laughs> how they're coming out would be great. Um, anyway, let's get into the actual issue, B. Ryan, to the Hickmeister. Take us through what is happening uh, as we left off from the last issue. So basically, we have uh, Alpha 001 Prime with Destro and the Baroness. They've just left Kansas, and they're coming back into the, the Revanche Corporate HQ in New Jersey. Now, last time we saw this was a couple of issues back, and Destro and the Iron Grenadiers had just plowed through this place you know, destroying blue ninja robots, leaving them destroyed in their wake. Yeah. They're now back at the scene. Clearly that the the building is still occupied by Iron Grenadiers. And as Destro and Baroness dismount from the helicopter, we can see Alpha Zero Zero One Prime behind them, you know, communicating in his zeros and ones <laughs> in, in disguise as a as an Iron Grenadier. And Destro addresses the the troops, gets in your eyes front prepare for inspection they all stand to attention and he says look eyes on me and ignore the grenadier officer that's behind you and nice little panel there from Nitho as it's kind of a split panel you see the alpha 001 prime on one side of the group in the first half and in the second half he's now behind the iron grenadiers all standing to attention and then his disguise just fades away and we see Alpha Zero Zero One Prime as a, a revenge droid, and all these thwip, 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 wires start coming out of him uh, into the backs of the necks thok, of the, thok, the thok, Iron thok. <laughs> <laughs> And now, now they're all talking in zeros and ones, so we know that control has been established over these particular troops. I found this quite an interesting uh, intro because it's one of those things that you know you feel like if for example we just cut to the baroness and and, and destro and alpha zero zero one inside the facility and all the grenadiers around them had the green eyes you could kind of say you know you could just get the you get the idea that they've all been had their minds taken over like you'd understand what's happened i like the fact that and you can argue that you do need this panel you do need this intro but uh, I like the fact he they went and showed Alpha Zero Zero One taking over the remaining Grenadiers just so all those loose ends were tied up. Do you know what I mean? Like I kind of I like the fact they actually included that. And again, you could argue that yes, it is necessary that you do need to see this play out so they can kind of walk into the facility and carry on and so on. But I don't think I would have been that fussed if we'd have cut straight to say page what is it like three or one two three like four in where you've got Destro and the Baroness working on on the droids, you know like yes. I, I I don't think I would have been that upset or would have been that confused if they just had a little bit of explanation at the top saying at the back at the revanche facility. Do you know what I mean? Like I but again. I do like the fact they went that extra mile and did that little bit at the beginning. We get a nice little bit of exposition here from Alpha Zero Zero One Prime, yeah, where yeah. he said, you know, he explains, look, you know, we're not really upset that you came in and invaded our facility. We don't have these human emotions, and in fact, what you've revealed are these problems that in our design flaw, yeah. our design flaws in the Blue Ninjas, that you know you could just easily incapacitate them once you knew where their kind of central processes were oh, no, located. It's, it's like, it's a, basically it's that adapt, isn't it? Kind of like a, a just and adapt type mentality. And it's like they forced them to develop and evolve into an even better machine. And literally is, we, we see this where he slides back a panel and it's the, it's, you know, it's the only room that there's been no, obviously hasn't been located by the Iron Grenadiers. There's no carnage in this room. 
and you have all of the these new heads neatly stacked on these shelves, yeah. ready ready to go. And he essentially gets Destro and Baroness to kind of jury rig up a, an assembly line and to place these new processor units on the on all of the, the ruined um, Blue Ninja androids. And effectively, they're going to have a better stronger army now as if they weren't terrifying enough in the first place with human skin on them <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so and uh, again that kind of if we go back to the yearbook and we look at the fact that that one ai unit decided to make a, its own decision based on sympathy to protect the joes and to, and to stop alpha zero zero one from killing them you know like that thing that happened in the yearbook was just another like you, that's where you thought it was going that's where i thought it was going i thought they were going to start infiltrating and have the skin and be more human and that isn't the case and i think that's quite genius in that larry's gone well obviously they have to they're not going to be able to survive like that so they're going to have to survive like this and and that is i think i think is quite genius writing in all honesty this guy is he's on top of his game but he never does anything without a reason and I think that there's a setup. You know, that was, I'm so glad you brought up that yearbook. There's a flaw in the programming that one of their agents was able to feel an emotion. Yeah. And, and he kind of goes to pains here to point out that Alpha 001 Prime is convinced that it refers to as, I, I don't have any of those strange glitches that yeah. you meet puppets call emotions. So I wonder if, if later as this story evolves, will we see that maybe there is a bug in the system that might turn some of these Blue Ninja operatives against uh, the, the hive mind? Yeah, you wonder if that's how they're going to have to attack this particular threat because they're not even going to... A lot of them aren't going to see it coming. You know, that's the other thing. that Like, Destro and the Baroness have been taken over, so now they've got that basis done, they can kind of go through the entire Cobra organisation. So that that whole element could be taken over by revenge and then you just got a stronger bad guy um you know and then who's to say that the joes won't slowly be taken over as well so yeah it's um interesting I, i'd like to see where it kind of goes but again we've i, I i'm guessing we're going to get to a conclusion with this because there's only a couple of issues left and then it turns into snake hunt i gotta say that click very carefully <laughs> yeah so i, I don't I, I get the feeling they're going to conclude it what do you think? I think the, the the chapter will wrap up, but I don't think the full it, this this will have repercussions in yeah. the, the further continuity for sure. So, do you think it'll kind of almost go dormant for a little while while this other storyline's going on? It's, it's a hard one to say because Larry is uh, he's introduced a lot of new players in this particular issue, and you can see the setup for for Snake Hunt. <laughs> happening right now yeah there's there's a very obvious kind of setup there for, for that so that potentially sets a precedent to have this artificial intelligence thread carry over into the snake hunt uh series that, that's coming up every time we say it it makes me giggle okay um <laughs> moving through the issue then obviously we come out of um the revanche hq and we move into another part of new jersey and we see what well, I, I love that first panel because we see crystal written on as the, uh, the the shop sign in this like really beleaguered mall and on the kind of the main image on the thing is crystal ball's hypnotic shield so you know what you're going to be getting here and as this kind of fat blonde woman uh, knocking on the door is, is kind of like trying to get in and speak to crystal ball out of hours you can he opens the door and he's this is like you know in his pants which is hilarious <laughs> <laughs> she kind of pushes the door open knife. i know that is a rough that is a rough week right there and then she comes in and she's like oh it smells like moldy cabbage and gym socks in here and he's kind of like you know <laughs> cough basically and she tra transforms into zartan so he's there to kind of basically go pull yourself together mate we need you there's a bit of bit of comedy in here you know initially he, I mean, he looks wrecked he's been on a, a bender this guy's in a bad form this customer barges in you know comments on the state of his the stink in his apartment <laughs> there's a mattress on the floor as well isn't there i just noticed that it's uh it's, i mean it's absolutely he's got a shield against the wall and his beer cans or glasses who knows but i mean the place is in bits and of course, he you know he tries to to suss out this this customer, and he goes, oh, yeah, you know, you don't have to insult me. Um, you know that I have a special relationship with the spirit world." And then it you know, as you say, Save she transforms into Zartan. 
<laughs> save it for the suckers. And, uh, you know, for someone with a special relationship with the spirit world, you certainly seemed in the dark about who I was. And Brilliant. I just love that little Brilliant. jab, you know. I mean, he's after information from Springfield, isn't he? And he needs Crystal Ball to go in there and, and get him what the, what you know, get him what he calls. And I, and I, I quote, get me the real poop. I love that. It's almost like he, um, Larry's not allowed to swear in this comic, so <laughs> oh, yeah. he has to kind of uh, think of other ways of doing it. Yeah, so uh, he basically wants him to go to the ne- get on the next bus to Springfield and get me the real poop, which is hilarious. I, I love that because you know Crystal Ball goes, uh, so you need me to part the mists and see into their secret hearts? No, dummy. I need you to take the next bus, and it's just, it's, you know, get your hole up there. Yeah. Find out what's going on and come back and tell me. Yeah, it's cute. I, I do like that little, little kind of, little bit. And obviously, that means that, you know, we're going to see a bit more Crystal Ball, which I'm I'm happy to, to say is a bo- bonus for me because I really like that character. As ridiculous as he is, I think he's pretty cool. But then, as that kind of whips by, we get probably the most confusing element of this comic so far, and that is the return of the once killed in action in the com in this comic, October Guard, um, Horror Show, uh, Stormavic, Shrage. Now these three guys and and Colonel Brekov, sorry, all killed in I think like I can't remember which issue it was. Now I've I've just done it on Talking Joe's with uh, Talking Joe with Chief. And we covered this, and it's, there's no doubt Brekov, Horror Show, they get rinsed with bullets and then blown up in a car. So there's literally no way back for those two. And Storm Mavic and Shrage are torn to pieces again with bullets, trying to change the direction of a train manually with the manual controls. So they are all dead in this timeline. So. I am so confused why we're seeing them all alive and well here. You know, talking about where they were, where they've been, and they're in there in the kind of they're in this cafe in Africa as well. I think it is in Kalingaville, downtown Kalingaville, and they're they're basically saying that you know since since the disbanding of the October Guard, they've basically been doing lots of different things all over the place, but they've come together to meet in this in this cafe, which is run by Horror Show, which is hilarious. But, I mean, what do you think about this? Because this is really confusing to me. So, I wasn't aware that they had been killed off previously, so that, that would have happened before I jumped back into oh, yeah. this was, Real American Hero. Mate, this was in, this was in, the, uh, this was in the Marvel run, as opposed to the IDW okay. kind of rejig, yeah. yeah. So, but, I mean, it, Brekov is there, and he just casually talks about when, you know, what have you been doing since we were disbanded? And okay, so that for someone who's not familiar with the continuity from, say, the the Marvel mm. one, you can buy into that. Okay, yeah, yeah. you know they're they're picking up their lives, and I noticed that in the editor's letter at the back of the comic, he makes no reference to it either. So yeah, the the thing with the letters is it's always going to be like the next issue that you get any kind of re- like relation to the previous one. And that's what I'm desperately waiting to see because I haven't picked up two six five yet. I, as soon as I as soon as I do, then it might there might be some light shed on this particular confusing head scratching scenario. But yeah, I mean it, it's interesting. They're all in there. They're chatting away, and then then this car pulls up, screeches to a to a halt, and in like burst Dragonskin Dana, who were alive. So it's interesting to me that Dana and Dragonski turn up. They're the two that turn up and knock the door down and. They're like, we need you guys, we need you to help us with basically Cobra after Snake Eyes and we need help, and they need help. And so they kind of all look at him and go like, what? And they all jump in the car and drive off. And it's like, you know, I was bored anyway, and I never liked those Cobras, says Horror Show. But I mean, it just it just really, really confused me as to why all of a sudden the October Guard are in the picture. But I mean, side note anyway, and I'm sure... That will all, I mean, either it's a mistake from Larry, because he's done it before with Sneak Peek and a couple of other people kind of just popping up randomly that should be dead in the comic. And and not just that, but didn't we just have an issue, just have an issue where they talked about the dead in the comic? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's funny that the October Guard mm. weren't involved in that and are now in this. That is unusual. So, yeah. Anyway, head scratcher. Do you think there's anything to the fact that we see, you know, Brekhoff 
Horror Show, Strage, and uh, Stormovic. They're on their civvies. But Dragonski and Dana are like yeah. fully kitted out. Well, that's what I was saying. I, mean, I find that interesting that those are the two that turn up and ask for help, and the other three, have, or the other four, have been, you know, otherwise engaged this whole time. But after the October Guard were killed in that issue, a couple of issues later, and the issues I think like around one hundred one to one hundred six, there's this kind of there's this kind of October Guard story in the Marvel run, and it's where Dana and Dragonski are back, and they've got new kind of recruits. It's like me, Sergeant uh, Misha and Gorky or Red Star. Yes, Gorky. It's Gorky. So those two turn up, and yeah, Red Star I believe comes into it later on as well, but. At the at that point, it's Gorky and Misha. They're in this new October Guard team. So you're kind of thinking, you know, it's really confusing as to how this has been made, like how a mistake has been made here, basically, is what I'm saying. I don't... I, I think there's more to it, but I want to know what that is, What what's in Larry's thinking here, because I don't... It's confusing at the moment. If Larry is listening to this show, <laughs> we've got questions, Larry. We've got questions, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Uh, well, in any case, we move on from the confusing October Guard part into probably the most action-packed element of the story, don't we? Oh, this is like this is the, the real juice in this issue. Love this uh, next Statue sequence. of Liberty vibes of that intro from the movie already. Yeah, loving it. <laughs> we even get a lens flare. Bing! Yeah, a bit of JJ going off the bottom yeah. there. This is a great little sequence. So clearly, there's some stuff going down. There's some poop going down. <laughs> In the Statue of Liberty, we get this beautiful panel. It's the sun, you know, I mean, it, 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 everything about this is great. The way it's lit, the yeah, colouring, the whole lot. Yeah. And you've got a whole pile of, you know, choppers buzzing around the top of the, the, the statue. And Liz Fong is uh, reporting in from Chopper WNYZAM, <laughs> circling the Statue of Liberty, where terrorists have taken hostages in the crown and wait. And then they patch through to a live broadcast from uh, these kind of white supremacist uh terrorists who are really not happy with everything that the statue of liberty stands for yep got all the foreigners coming in basically and taking all the jobs uh which has been uh, the, or they're saying that the foreigners working at the statue of liberty which has been deg- degraded ever since they put that the, they've put that commies poem on the pedestal so they're just really, you know, again, like the kind of white supremacist son of a bitch scumbags. I, I presume that poem they're referring to is the New Colossus, which was put on the statue in 1903, <laughs> so, which is, uh, you know, a great poem. They are, def- say- they are definitely referring to that. I thought you were going to give us a rendition of it for a second then, Brian. I thought you going to break into it for a second. Um, but anyway, yeah, so they've planted explosives. They've got loads of hostages and they're threatening to just blow the up and they're i think they're basically what they're saying is they want all foreigners commies and weirdo religionists banned from entering the usa that's what they want that's their that's their plan is to get that that sorted and well there's no way the full force crew are going to get in so we're uh <laughs> me and patty are definitely not welcome I, anyway. <laughs> I, sn- I snuck in under the radar unfortunately uh i you know i wouldn't have been able to do it a couple of years afterwards that's the situation we're dealing with all of a sudden i love this a tomahawk turns up with TV IDW written on it as if to kind of <laughs> trick people into thinking it's a TV helicopter. And they're like, uh, clearly, that is a G.I. Joe chopper. Uh, and yes, it is. Lift ticket at the helm. And he drops off two of the finest, Scarlet and Snake Eyes, with Stalker and Low Light staying on board and maintaining kind of like cover fire from distance, like sniper fire and obviously... Uh, leading the the mission is stalker so I mean, again beautiful beautiful illustration work here we've got this kind of you know looking up kind of perspective view tomahawk is is kind of high above them they're kind of leaping down onto the the top of the crown of the statue a little bit of banter between uh, low light and stalker you know they, they obviously cut it a bit fine to kind of jump out and, and and just barely land on the crown i think scarlet actually nearly slips yeah and it's uh sean collins who grabs her and saves her you know and stalker's like that was too close low light and he says you know you're not giving sean enough credit then of course he reminds us you know it's it uses code name it's throwdown so it's very easy to call this guy snake eyes but obviously we know it's, it's, it's a different uh, different character it cuts back to inside the crown and the terrorists know there's um you know 
some some poop is about to go down <laughs> they know there's people on the roof we're going to use poop a lot on this show now yeah it's easier than bleeping all the time i think for me as well <laughs> <laughs> they they open fire and as they're blasting holes in the roof again more beautiful I love uh, action packed illustration they're just swinging down off the uh, off the top ready to come in through the windows Scarlet looks like Spider Woman there doesn't she she looks like Gwen Stacy where she's kind of like oh, flipping yeah. like in that position and Snake Eyes well sorry throw down is like kind of almost like a one handed swinging kind of handstand motion as he's flipping through but yeah i love that it's really cool amazing and even even the, the little sound effects that are kind of written in there you know chunk patonk katong it really gets the sound of bullets going through the yeah you know, the, the, the bronze plating it's great how what i really like here is how you've got snake eyes snake you've got throwdown and scarlet i've got to stop saying that myself kind of <laughs> flipping in sean collins cuts one guy in half literally and scarlet twangs Pachocks someone in the head with her um, crossbow and then there's one dude is kind of behind Scarlet and he goes you're dead red but as he doesn't realize behind him in the chopper is our you know resident super sniper low light who has been getting some a lot of good um, kind of screen time in the last in, in like this run of comics recently and just takes him out and she's like good shot low light and I just love how smooth that was. Those two go in, take out the first two, and low light drills the second, the third guy. It's brilliant. Again, just a shout out here to the, the amazing artwork on, on this. Again, this is this is a sequence that happens in like seconds, and the way the artwork is is, is kind of presented on the panels that they kind of intersect. They're they're all kind of slightly at angles. It just captures that whole sense of of speed. Which, which all this action unfolds it's yeah. beautifully done beautiful the hostages are, well sorry the final hostage is taken kind of downstairs by the remaining terrorists as they're making their way downstairs you can see there's like tons of you know like explosives dotted around the place and one of the terrorists who has the hostage a, a security guard female security guard who just happens to be uh, you know of a uh, person of color he has no sorry the other guy has the clacker doesn't he so he has the gun to her head and the other the other terrorist has the clacker he has control of the explosives snake eyes takes out the guy with the clacker and he drops it on the floor and they have a fight and he basically kicks him over the edge of the stairs into his death and we get the classic wilhelm scream or the comic book version (laughs) it's we always seem to have one of those don't we it's great i love it and then it's not Conchita or Chiquita, but that's what they've been calling these female security guard the entire time. Um, she spoons the guy in the testicles, right and, in the nuts. and that's where this kind of like she's kind of beating him down. Um, Marcella, her name is, and as he's reaching for the clacker, lols. Sean Collins can't do anything about it, so Scarlet is the one that shoots the uh, again her crossbow, an arrow into his hand to stop him from getting to it, and there you have it. She punches him in the back of the uh, and Marcella punches him in the back of the head just for just for a bit of more lols and then that's where we we kind of cut to what the news crew are looking at at that point which is you know they're kind of going oh look let's roll that back we're gonna have to edit that but that's because <laughs> obviously uh throwdown is cutting someone in half so yeah they're gonna have to edit that but and it's, it's that last panel is what that whole sequence is leading up to because cuts back to Cobra HQ in Springfield and we've got Cobra Commander and Dr. Mindbender watching the news and seeing this footage, which confirms for them that Snake Eyes is still alive. I have to I have to point out here, Dr. Mindbender's chest has got some hair on it for the first time in age. It's almost Ooh. like he's just given up like waxing his chest. Said before in the show, and I'm going to say it again, this guy is ripped. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. I might say it again in another show. <laughs> He's probably say it before the end of this one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he is absolutely ripped, and they've they've been reverse engineering revanche technology. Their plan is to get Snake Eyes into this into this new updated brainwave scanner, effectively, uh, and go from there. So it's all it's all kind of like history repeating itself a little bit, isn't it? There's a lot of that happening here. But you know what? We were talking about this. Is Larry just going to close off the artificial intelligence chapter? Is it going to continue in the continuity of the movement Snake Hunt? These guys are using revenge technology potentially leaving themselves exposed to be infiltrated by alpha 001 prime and other revenge agents so 
I think there's there's a major setup here for a, a clash between Revanche, Cobra, and the Joes. Yeah. I, I can see that definitely. It's a pretty stonking issue. It's got everything you you know that, that we've come to kind of enjoy about a real American hero recently for for me personally as well. What would you give this one overall in a potating, Brian? And also kind of give us your overall thoughts on it. In terms of the overall thoughts, I think the you know I'm a huge fan of of Nito Diaz's work. Um, I've got to give a big shout out to Jagdish Kumar and Jay Brown on the the inks and the colors. It's it's a visually stunning episode. I love that there's so much being reintroduced in here. We've got Crystal Ball, seen Zartan again. Haven't seen Zartan in a while. Yeah, uh, coming back into it. The October Guard. We haven't. Seen- <laughs> I'm I'm okay with it. The continuity uh, contradiction. I didn't expect to see the October Guard, so that was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, full on action around the uh, Statue of Liberty. Um, you know, seeing Sean Collins and Scarlett like a, an excellent duo kicking. A nice little bit of action from low light in there as well. And then, of course, all coming back to Cobra at the end and the setup for... for they've been hyping up the Snake Hunt series that's uh, that's coming down the line. I'm really excited for that now and can't wait. So this is a great setup for me. Really, really happy with it. In terms of the, the rating, you know, I've, I've been going in with like five five potatoes. Every single uh, issue that we, we cover this, this is no different. Larry's on top of his game. Absolutely loving it. Excellent pick it up i would agree with all of that the only thing i think that brings it down for me i'm going to take half a potato away for the return of the october guard as much as i want i would you know it's great to see them back i just don't see and this could like retrospectively if um if for whatever reason it is a it is a, a there's a there's a there's a real true reason behind their return and there's like a something that has happened in which they weren't dead and when it's explained even if there's a retcon in there i might come back and change my mind but i just cannot for the life of me see how they were how they survived their ordeal you know the uh, that they actually went through so it's going to be difficult to i think for larry to wreck on this one he may not even bother trying he may just let it sit there and it's just a case of you know that particular thing that happened in the marvel run is just a forgotten aspect um in which case i have to take a potating off or half a potating off in any case so i'm going to give it four and a half but other than that it's got action it's got intrigue it's got some really nice elements uh yeah really pleased with this one as an issue so anyway yeah that brings us to the end of this particular episode and this gi joe real american hero issue 264 we'll be doing 265 later this week thanks to uh, brian is now available he's 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 got he went dark and i thought revanche had him for a while but he's back. He probably zero, zero, one, one, yeah, one, I was going to say, zero, zero, one, zero, one. probably still are hooked up to uh, <laughs> Alpha Zero Zero One's Thok Thwip. But no, it's good to have you Wee. back, buddy. Uh, look, it's great to be back. Really looking forward to covering 265 uh, and obviously getting it in hand first and then covering 265. And, and, and who knows? Maybe some more disorder of battle it will be in the in the works very very soon. That means there is going to be a disorder of battle, guys. So uh, you know, just you know, avoid all of the riddles that Brian's throwing at you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're not hard to decipher. <laughs> yeah, they're really rubbish riddles. He's like the worst Batman villain ever. Anyway, thank you, Brian, for jumping on. Really appreciate it, mate. Thank you very much. Loved every minute of it. That's it for this instalment of the Full Force Comics Burst. Thank you to my awesome co-host, Brian Hickey. See you next time. And as always, 0011000000011000. Force. There are quite a lot of zeros and ones to make the word full, isn't it? <laughs> That's a hell of a lot. I couldn't be bothered to do force as well, so they just get they just get half of a revanche <laughs> at sign off. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback or questions. We have also started a Patreon page so if you want to see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force and a big shout out to our sponsors distant planet comics and collectibles 
located at 601 Business Loop 70 West Suite 263, located in the Parkade Center, Columbia, Missouri. You can visit their website at distantplanetcomics.com and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash distantplanetcomics.